So good evening, everyone. Welcome to a new Teaching with Technology uh, webinar. Um, it's great to have you with us on a Friday evening, especially that today uh, was a Black Friday. So we hope you've had uh, happy shopping and, uh, you know, uh, we're very grateful that you're here with us. Uh, this evening's webinar is titled Integration of Edpuzzle, Flipgrid and Kahoot into English Language Teaching. Um, I would like to uh, give a short uh, introduction about uh, our presenter. Uh, English Online is happy to, to have Kimberly Lenz as our uh, guest speaker this evening. Uh, Kimberly holds a Bachelor of Education and C. Tassel from University of Manitoba. She's currently the program coordinator at the English Language Center at the University of Manitoba. She has been working in the field of English language uh, teaching since 1998. She has 15 years of experience in EAL instruction, including teaching adult learners in South Korea, uh, Saudi Arabia, and Canada. In addition to classroom teaching, Kimberly has experience coordinating EAL programs, facilitating course development projects, mentoring instructors, and supporting uh, instructor development. Um, so um, let's go through some housekeeping uh, rules before we start. I would like you please to kindly um, mute yourselves. Uh, so use the, the listen only mode for the time being. And uh, feel free at the end uh, of the webinar, uh, if you would like to ask questions, uh, you can unmute yourself then. Um, and uh, throughout the session, please, uh, if you would like to use the chat box to type any questions or comments, uh, please do that. And Kimberly will be happy to answer your questions uh, at the end of the webinar. Thank you very much. Kimberly, you can start. Thank you. All right, thank you, Pam. Uh, good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining me on a, on a Friday evening. It's uh, great to be here with you. I see we've got um, a nice small group from across Canada, a variety of locations. So uh, great to see you all here tonight. Um, as Pam mentioned, I encourage you to jot down any comments that you have or questions in the chat box uh, throughout the presentation. Um, if there's time throughout uh, the presentation, I'll certainly address that. And um, at the end, I will try to answer as many questions as I can. Uh, unfortunately, my webcam isn't working here, but um, in any case, hopefully you can all hear me. And uh, why don't we get started? All right, so um, as you can see from the title of the presentation, um, the focus uh, today is on three digital tools. Um, that can be integrated into English language teaching. Uh, the tools are called Edpuzzle, Flipgrid, and Kahoot. And they are fantastic uh, digital tools to um, enhance student learning, um, as well as increase um, engagement in the classroom. They're all free and uh, very user-friendly. So without further ado, why don't we get started? Um, before I get into my presentation um, proper, I'd like to ask you a few questions. So question number one, if you could just uh, enter your response into the chat box. I'm wondering uh, what your hope is, uh, what would you would like to learn in the webinar? Um, if I have a sense of what your interest is, then hopefully I can try to address um, your um, areas of interest. New tools for online teaching. Well, then you've come to the right place for sure. Anyone else? Technical skills? Yeah, hopefully with this presentation, I, I want to try and give you an opportunity to, um, to use the tools. So I hope to increase um, your confidence in um, using the tools and giving you resources to help you with that. New approaches? Yeah, I'll definitely be talking about approaches, um, ways that the tools can be used. Um, wanting to integrate more technology, great. Um, yes, these are definitely user-friendly. Um, and at the end of the webinar, there are many resources if you need further support in using these tools in your class. Thank you. All right, one more question. Um, just wondering if there's any experience um, with Edpuzzle, Flipgrid, or Kahoot. So has anyone tried um, using these um, maybe 
um, in your classroom or maybe you've seen them used um, from someone else. No? Okay, well, um, that's great. Then, then there'll be lots of learning here. So good to know. Okay, heard of Kahoot? Using Edpuzzle and Kahoot, but not Flipgrid. Okay, Flipgrid, I, I feel, is a bit newer. Um, and it's really, really popular, uh, Flipgrid. There's um, quite a popular trend in the last few years with Flipgrid. Okay, and we have another uh, participant who's used them when teaching. So um, hopefully I can provide some, some new ideas uh, for you as well. All right, so moving on very quickly, my objectives for the presentation today is I want to introduce and demonstrate the tools for you. Um, also talk about ways to use the tools in English language teaching. Also, I hope to share some perspectives from instructors in our program at the English Language Center um, on their experiences using the tools in the, our EAP program. Uh, for those of you who aren't familiar, um, EAP is um, English for Academic Purposes. And um, my hope as well is to give you an opportunity to try using the tools. And then again, I'll share resources so that hopefully you can um, try implementing the tools right away into your classroom. So here's a quick overview of the presentation. I'll begin with Edpuzzle. Um, this is a tool for creating inter interactive video lessons. Um, as we know, videos are quite a powerful um, teaching tool and Edpuzzle is um, a fantastic way to be able to um, engage your students um, more effectively with videos. Uh, Flipgrid will be second. Um, this is a tool for creating interactive video discussions. Um, so great for speaking. And finally, Kahoot uh, will talk about um, how you can create interactive digital games. Uh, this is a really exciting, fun tool for students, um, and it's always a hit. Um, it creates a lot of engagement, um, and then we'll follow that up with um, references and resources. For each of the tools, I want to give you a brief description, demonstration, some uses, and instructor perspectives. All right, so starting off with Edpuzzle, um, as I mentioned, it's free. It's a website and an app. Um, this is, again, a tool where you will um, make your own interactive video lessons. You can either use um, a pre-made video. There's a whole selection within Edpuzzle. So for example, there's YouTube videos, TED Talks, um, and so on, um, Khan Academy. Or you can also upload your own videos if you make your own videos and would like um, to create a lesson around those videos. Um, so briefly, um, some features that are um, notable is that you can crop the video. So if you don't want your students to watch all of the video, but just part of it, uh, this is a great feature. Um, you can also voice over. So add your entire voice over the video. Uh, this isn't a feature I have used so much. Um, I prefer the audio notes. And this is where you add your own comment. It could be a definition. Uh, it could be a question. Um, uh, some, some extra description about what the students are hearing. And it will pause the video. So that way the students are just focusing on listening to you. Um, and then it will go back to the video itself. So this is a really great way to give extra information um, as students are listening to the video. And then finally, I think the most important feature is quizzes. So you can add questions, um, either multiple choice or open-ended questions or comments as well um, to videos. So as students are listening to the video, um, they will be prompted to answer different questions um, of the video as they are watching the video. So it's a great way to see, um, to see uh, assess how students um, are understanding the video and um, it also will show you reports of what questions students get right and wrong so it can help you to understand where students uh, may be having difficulty uh, with those videos. A few more features here. Um, the students will wa again watch the video, complete the questions and what you can see afterwards is whether or not the students watch the video. So this is really helpful because, um, of course, sometimes students may say they watched it, 
but here you can hold them accountable and it will show exactly which parts of the video they watched, how many times they watched it. If there's a part they didn't watch, you will notice that as well. It will also show you how long the student took to watch the video. So that can give you important information as well about the difficulty for the student um, of the video. Um, it will give um, answers to the students. You'll be able to see those answers and grades. Um, you can do this as a, a summative assessment for grades, or it can just be more of um, a formative assessment so you can see what they understand and areas that they were having challenges. Um, something that's really neat as well is that um, there's a no skip option, which means that students can't fast forward through the video. Um, so that way, they, they, um, what, if, if they watch a show you that they've watched all parts of the video, they actually have to watch it. They can't fast forward and they can't just pause the video um, or sorry, they can't just move to another screen um, because the video will pause. So in order for um, it to indicate the students have watched all of the video, um, it, they need to stay on that screen. So these are um, helpful features for teachers. All right, so moving on to the demonstration portion, um, I'd like everyone to go to the link. I see that um, Pam has put it into the chat box. Um, and right on the, on, the, on the slide, it has step by step um, what you need to do in terms of having an experience using Edpuzzle. So you'll go to the link. You can do this right away. Um, you may want to do it on a separate mobile device if you prefer, or um, you can just do it on, on a laptop and another, um, another tab. You'll want to actually sign up as a student first. Um, and this is in the top right hand corner. Um, you'll sign up as a student. You'll create an Edpuzzle account and you'll want to enter a, a class code. So this is V-E-E-T-F-O-Z. It's right on the screen there for you. You'll want to create your account, uh, fill out your details. And then once you've created your account, um, you'll see the video and you'll have an opportunity to play the video and answer the questions. Uh, the questions are on the right hand side. So when you play the video, you'll see the video will stop at different points and you'll go to the right side of the screen to answer the questions or listen to audio notes. I'll give you about five minutes for this and then I'll call you back. Um, if you are finished before that time, if you could just indicate this um, by clicking on, I think it's the happy face on the left side of the screen to update your status saying that you've returned. I believe how that, that that's how that works. Pam, you can yes, exactly. interrupt if I've made an error there. Yeah, so about five minutes, um, you can try um, having an experience using Edpuzzle from the student perspective. If you are having a challenge doing that, uh, feel free just to type a question into the chat box and I can address that. I see there is a um, problem for one participant. I'm not sure what... Um... Mehmet? Yeah, he's saying he needs the, the link for the webinar, which he already has. I just replied to him. 
Yeah, this is for um, uh, someone has entered the code but cannot go further. Um, did you click on create your account um, under the class code? So underneath, once you enter the class code, you have to click create your account, which is beneath there. Oh, great. Welcome, Ken. <laughs> oh, Ken, oh, you are you are in the um, Ed Puzzle. I see. Perfect. Munira, I'm not sure that I understand your question. Are you asking about um, replaying the video section? I believe you can play it many times, each section. Yeah, you should be able to play each section um, more than once. Once you answer the questions on the right hand side, yes, you sign in as a student. Um, once you answer the questions on the right hand side, then the video will continue to different parts of the video. And if you want to watch a section again, um, you should be able to watch that section again. So I'm not sure if I've answered your question, Munira, but yes, you can rewatch each section of the video. Once you answer the question on the right hand side. Yeah, so Yuen, um, I'm wondering if you are trying to create a student account. Okay, you found it, Munira, that's great. We do have a few minutes left, um, and then we'll come back. Uh, Yuen, if you can't get in today, um, certainly you can try after the webinar. Um, and you are welcome to contact me, and you know we can um, talk on the phone or by email, and I can help you out uh, more one-on-one -on -one if you can't um, get in right at this moment. about one more minute. All right, well, I'll just call everyone back right now. Um, I believe, uh, I'm not sure if you have able, been able to, to view and answer all of the questions, uh, but hopefully for most of you, you were able to experience it somewhat so you can see how it works. 
uh, maybe just in um, in the chat box very briefly, could you let me know if you were able to try it, yes or no? And just write yes if you were able to try it in the chat box or no if you were unable to. Some people just getting in now. Okay, looks like um, most people have gotten in. Um, if you would like to try it further, I will leave it open. So you're, you're certainly welcome to go back in after the webinar today and try it further just to explore it a bit more and, and see how it works as a student. All right, so I'd like to um, walk you through just a few of the basic features to actually um, setting up um, a video yourself for your students. So this could be, um, and whether it's an online class or whether it's um, in the classroom face-to-face, -face, if you want to choose your own video and um, make questions and create it for your own students, how would you go about doing that? Um, I won't give all of the steps, um, it's, but um, I just wanna highlight the main features. And in the resources at the back, there are step-by-step -step, um, videos and resources that will explain it in more detail. So I'm just going to um, zoom in a little bit. On the left-hand side here, you'll see a lot of the tools for accessing um, different parts of Edpuzzle. And same also with the top on the right here. Um, on the left, you'll see right at the bottom, these are many different videos that you can choose from. So for example, if you wanted to um, choose a TED Talks video for your class, you would just click right on TED Talks. And then, um, Perhaps now I'm, I'm on TED Talks. Perhaps I want to search a specific category. So maybe I want to watch a video on technology. So I can enter that into um, to the, the, the spot here. And then um, if this is the video I want to watch, here I'll zoom in a little bit more. Maybe this is the video that I would I like and I would like to create for my class. I would just click on the square here. And then at the bottom, it gives you an option to edit, copy, um, or unselect if you had copied it, if you decide that, say, you don't want to use that video. Um, in terms of edit, this is what you would click um, to be able to, to add your own questions to the video. So that would be, um, really the most basic steps. And then once you do that, then you'll come to a screen that looks like this. And you'll have options first to crop the video, which is what's showing. So you would just simply slide this part over and this part over here, and it crops it to the part of the video you wanna watch. Um, here, you would click if you want to voice over the entire video. Um, again, that's something I haven't done. Um, I prefer the audio note. So I would click on the section of the video where I want to add the audio note, um, click audio note, and then you are able to speak um, whatever you'd like to say, say a definition of a word or um, some explanation about the video. And then this button here on the far right is, this is where you make your quizzes. So you would click on that and, and follow the steps. It's fairly user-friendly. So I won't go through the details there, but I did want you to see um, those basic features and setting up your own um, interactive video for students. And the last part I want to show you very quickly here um, in the top right. Let's just move this over. Yeah, so here is content that you have within your account. These are your cl classes. So once you create a video, they'll be kept in here and grade book. So this is where you'll go after students watch your video. And to give you a sense of what you will see for each student, um, here is me. I tried this uh, myself as a student. Um, you'll notice I didn't get 100%. I, I purposefully um, got some of the questions wrong. So you'll see here that the first part of the video I watched twice, um, second part I watched twice. It also tells you the time, right? So you can see how long your, the students watched each, each section of the video. And these are where the questions are. So my first question was correct. The second one, the answer was wrong, and so forth. So this is really helpful. Um, so you can see uh, how your students are doing. Um, at the top right corner, I can click on next student, and then I can grade the next student or maybe go back to the previous student if needed. 
Um, in terms of marking the student's answers, any multiple choice question, um, you will have um, already put in the correct answer, so it will mark it for you. Um, if there is an open-ended question, then you will have to yourself indicate whether it is right or wrong, and you can also comment to the student. So you can make um, any kind of comment. If the student got the question wrong, then you can put a comment there that the student can read. So those are some of the basic features um, of Edpuzzle. Um, some uses for Edpuzzle, endless uses. Here are just a few for you. You can do it, use it to preview a topic. So, you know, let's say you're doing a reading on technology and you would like to um, preview that topic um, with a video. You can use it to teach content um, or you can use it after a topic to review or extend um, that topic. You can use it for assessment, um, either formative to see how students are doing and understanding or summative. So you can give them a grade for that. Um, which is being done in our program. Uh, one option is to play the video in class. There's a nice go live feature that you'll see um, in Edpuzzle, so you can play it for the whole class. And then as a class, you can discuss and respond to the questions together as a large group. This is a nice way to introduce students to Edpuzzle before they try it on their own. Another option, students could independently watch the video in class. Um, that way, if they have any questions, you can help them out. Uh, they would all need their own device to do that and headphones. Um, another option is if you only have a few, um, if you only have a few devices in your classroom, you could have stations. So students could be doing other work at different stations and when they get to the Ed Puzzle station, um, you could have a couple laptops or iPads set up for students or uh, cell phones and then they can answer those questions at that time. And finally, one more use is that you can flip your classroom. So you can assign this as homework for students so that they're watching the video and answering the questions outside the class. Um, certainly, this would be very useful for an online course. All right, here's just a few very quick um, instructor perspectives who have used it at the ELC. Um, so one instructor, um, listening, speaking instructor, has really liked it because you can break videos down into short segments. So that way you can focus on specific parts of videos and students won't be watching the whole video. And again, um, you can guide the students with audio explanations and definitions to deepen their understanding of what they're hearing. Um, and students have mentioned appreciation to um, the instructors that they, they understood more with Edpuzzle than they would have if they were watching a video without it. Um, another instructor who's been using it at the ELC has been using it for listening assignments. Um, and um, when you have long videos, has found it helpful um, by adding those questions along the way. So students are interacting and they can, they can answer the questions and watch the video as many times as they want and work at their own pace. Uh, this instructor as well has uh, given them practice in class and then at home they have a chance to try it out for um, with a video that's worth marks. All right, so that ends uh, the discussion about um, Ed, um, Ed Puzzle. Um, it's a fantastic tool. There are a few others like it, uh, TED-Ed or PlayPosit, uh, which are also very useful. Um, uh, I prefer Edpuzzle for the features um, that it provides. All right, so moving on, we are going to move on to Flipgrid. Uh, Flipgrid, again, it's a free website, it's an app. Um, today, for you to have an experience using Flipgrid, um, you'll be using the app. So if you haven't already downloaded the Flipgrid app, uh, maybe this is something you might want to do. Um, you can do it right now as I'm speaking or uh, as we get closer um, to to uh, using it yourselves. So it's a way for you to create video discussions with your students. So essentially the way it works is a teacher creates a prompt. So this is a question, uh, something that students would reflect on, and then the students will respond um, with a video. It's a response in a video. Um, so it's a great way to get students speaking. Some notable features are students can record as many times as they want. So if they don't like what they're recording to answer your question, they can do it again. Uh, 
you can also have students reply to other students' videos um, if you activate that. So you can, student videos, you can make it so everyone in the class can see each other's videos and then they would re reply to each other or they could be private. So only you as the instructor could see those videos. That's your choice. Um, also, you can uh, vary the response time. So if you don't want students talking for two minutes, um, you can change to 30 seconds. So you have that flexibility. A few other features here, um, you can provide feedback to the student on the video within this tool. Um, it can be public to everyone, it can be private. You can also um, create rubrics, your own custom rubrics, if you want to assess student speaking. Um, for those of you who are using portfolios, uh, mixtapes is a feature that allows you to compile videos into a playlist. So this is one way to showcase uh, student speaking um, in one compiled video. Uh, there's a discovery library with lots of templates for different kinds of topics um, that, that um, giving you ideas of what you could have students reflect on. Grid Pals is fantastic. It's kind of like Pen Pals, but in the modern age. So this allows you to connect with other students in other classrooms all around the world who are using Flipgrid. And when you connect with other classrooms, you'll see that, um, that it allows you to, um, it gives you information about what grade the students are. So if they're elementary learners, a grade six classroom, if they're adults, where they are. So it's a great way to have students speak with other students in English um, all around the world. Um, some other things, there's customized videos you can make that can be shared with others. Those are shorts. And um, there's also a feature, if a student gives a really great response and you want other students to see that as a model, you can um, like or like that response as a model. And finally, there is Spark. Spark response. And so if a student video you think would be a great prompt for a new discussion, that can be the new topic that you spark and your students will respond to that. So let's give you a chance here to, to try it out for yourself. Um, so the steps are all right on the screen. So just follow step by step. Um, so here, when you go to the Flipgrid app, you'll need to download it first. Um, you'll eventually see after you follow the steps that um, you're going to record your own video. You'll see my video, I, you'll see I have a video, it's on the left-hand side, and you'll listen to that. And you'll also see the prompt on the right-hand side, and then you're going to record your video to respond to that topic. Once you're finished, you'll be able to see other student videos or participants who've done it, and you can respond if there's time to other videos. So I'll let you try that out. Um, you have about five minutes and then we'll come back together. If you have any questions, feel free to type it into the chat box and just follow the steps, step by step on the slide.
If anyone's having any challenges, feel free to type any questions into the chat box. Okay, I'm just trying to understand your question, Nguyen. Um, so if you see the presentation about me, just scroll down on the page a little bit and you'll see there's a big green circle with um, like a white plus sign in it. And then you'll click right on there. You tried that? I have heard um, that Flipgrid is the app is blocked on some phones um, from some countries. So I'm not sure where your phone is from. Um, perhaps that is a problem you might be having with the app. So in those cases, then uh, students would need to go to the website and um, to answer the questions um, on the website. Uh, you would need to have a laptop with a webcam in order to answer, um, but perhaps it's, it's um, I'm not sure where your phone is from, but that could be your challenge. All right, about one more minute and then we'll come back, just in the interest of time. All right, um, I will call everyone back now. Not sure if you've had a chance to, to record um, a video or not. Uh, certainly, if you haven't, I encourage you after the webinar to give it a try. Um, I have made the slides available um, to Pam, so uh, she certainly can share them and you, um, I would encourage you to give that a try um, if you haven't been able to record a video yet. Um, has anyone, maybe just a quick yes or no, were you able to get in? A yes if you were able to get in and try recording your video. No if you were unable to get in and not record your video. Great, I see some yeses here. Fantastic. Good, got in. Excellent. Perfect. So just moving on here. Um, I have a very quick demonstration. Demonstration. Um, in the interest of time, I'm not going to show you everything, but what I do want to mention here is if you are creating your own Flipgrid for students, um, when you get into your own account, you'll have to create your own account. Um, when you go to the My Grid section, um, this is where you have your own grid. So what is a grid? It's, it's kind of like your own class. So uh, for example, you can see teachers in our program. Um, some of the classes that have been created. So this one's a level four listening speaking class. And within those grids, um, you can create um, different topics. So those topics are the different kind of assignments that you would give your students. So you would have many different topics within your grid. So different speaking activities that you would have for your students. So to create your grid, you're going to click add a new grid, which is just on this part here. Um, and then there's some different things you'll need to fill out. Um, I won't go through the details, but it's, it's fairly straightforward and many of the resources will explain this to you in more detail. Um, these are some of the steps that you would take. Um, so once your grid is created, I made this test grid for today, then you would add a new topic. So the topic is the specific speaking activity that you want the students to do. 
Um, so here you would type the title, um, your recording time, the prompt. So this is whatever you would like students to respond to. Um, so introduce yourself, that sort of thing. Um, and then here you can upload a picture or a video. So for my example, I uploaded my video and I typed in a response. Um, then there's many other things that you can, different features that you can uh, create your, your topic in the way that you would like for your class. Again, the resources will walk you through that. Um, and then this is what it'll look like in the end. Um, one nice feature is about adding topic guests. Um, this is what I've done for you today, and I've just given you that, that Flipgrid code, and then students just simply enter it. All right, so some uses here. There's so many uses for Flipgrid. Um, you can use it as a diagnostic. Um, so if you want to assess students' speaking ability at the beginning of a term, a nice way, a first introductory video. Um, you can warm them up to a topic. So you could get them talking about what they know, their background knowledge about a topic. Um, you can target pronunciation or grammar in speaking. Um, you could have students self-assess themselves with speaking. Um, maybe you're doing a reading class and you would like students to comment on the reading. You could, your prompt could be, um, what did you learn um, in that particular reading? Or do you have any questions about a certain reading or it'd be a video they watched in class? Um, it could be used as an exit ticket. So before the students leave the class, you could tell them what is one thing that you learned and um, do you have, what's one question that you have about today's lesson? And so they could record that video response right before they leave the class. You can use it for assessment. It could be individual or role play. Students can do it together, um, giving presentations or peer feedback. Um, some instruct instructor perspectives are here as well, um, how they've used it in their classes practicing pronunciation, um, telling stories. It's very creative. One nice thing about Flipgrid is if students are shy, camera shy, which is quite common, they can put emojis over their faces or um, some students will use props um, or scenery. Maybe they will film themselves, but it's not directed at their face. So there's different creative things that you can do if students are a bit shy to show their faces. Um, quite user-friendly. Um, it's a great way for pronunciation again. And again, one concern here is that the app is blocked on some phones, so you might want to um, use the website. And one challenge an instructor faced is that um, if it's private, that's only um, available to the instructor, not the student. Um, you can make it public, but then it's public to you and to the whole group um, if you would like students to, um, to see their own videos. All right, moving on to the last tool for today is Kahoot. And this is a really fun uh, way uh, to um, assess how students are doing. Um, well, that's one way to use it. Um, it's very engaging and you can see how students, how they're understanding your materials. So it's a way to create um, games. It's very uh, game-based and interactive. A lot of it's in real time. Um, students will answer questions, usually on a personal device or computer when you play a game. And on, usually you would display on, say, with a data projector, the actual questions in front of your class. There are different types of cahoots. The quiz uh, type um, is, um, is the free version. And it's, I think, the, um, the most commonly used one. It's quite competitive. It's multiple choice questions, basically. Um, some features, students, you can have students playing in teams or on their own. Uh, they can compete against a previous score. Um, you can copy and edit cahoots that others have made, um, that they've made public. Um, there's a question bank. You can use questions from that if you like. Um, you can insert images, YouTube videos. Another nice feature um, is sometimes students will put in funny nicknames and these get displayed to the entire class. So you can just enable a name generator so um, there aren't any bad names being displayed in front of the group. Um, great way to assess your students' um, understanding and you can assign them as homework as well. So that's what we'll do just as a quick example here um, is to give you an opportunity to try a homework challenge. So you'll, if you haven't already, you'll need to download the, download the Kahoot app. 
and then just follow the instructions right here. A few things I'd like to mention is once you have the app, you'll need to click on enter pin. It's at the very bottom of the screen in the middle. And once you click on that, it'll give you the option to enter the game pin. And then you'll enter and you'll put your nickname in there. I'm just your name, I guess. And then you'll say start. And you'll read the question and the answers. And you just click on what you think is the correct answer. There's colors and shapes. And just a point here is that you get points if you're correct, but you also get points for speed. So that makes it a bit more exciting. So you want to answer as fast as possible, but you also want to be correct. So I'll give you a chance to try this out, um, maybe about four minutes. And um, one thing to note, this uh, homework challenge is on the topic of the Grey Cup. Um, the Grey Cup happened just recently last weekend, so I was inspired to try a Kahoot on the Grey Cup. So go ahead, you have about four minutes. If you have questions, let me know. I'm just trying to understand where you are, um, Jeanne. Not quite sure which step you're on. Open the game link. So um, I assume you went to the Kahoot app. And then at the bottom in the middle, there is a button that says enter pin. It's at the bottom in the middle of the screen. When you click on there, then it'll, I'm just going to do it myself here too, so I can see where you are. Yeah, enter pin. It's in the bottom in the middle, and you'll see there's um, the four different colors and shapes, and it says enter pin. And then when you click on there, it says game pin, and you enter that game pin and then click enter. So you did that, okay. And so... Not sure why you're not able to enter the game. Oh, you're on the website for Kahoot. Okay. Let me see the website. It might look a little bit different on the website. For Kahoot, okay, so you have to go to, if you're on the website, there's two different websites for Kahoot. Um, there's Kahoot. Um, kahoot dot it. Here, I'll just type it into the chat box. Kahoot dot. I'm not sure what the full. Oh, here, let's do this here. If you're on the website, you'll want to go to this link here. Kahoot.it. Yeah, this is the, um, for the website. There's actually two websites. There's one for students, which is Kahoot.it. And then there's also um, perfect. Natalia is finished. Great. Um, then there's also the app. Um, oh, sorry. Going back to the website. There's also a, a website for creating your own Kahoot. The game won't load. Okay. Yeah, I'm not sure if it will work. I think I think the um, the homework challenge can only be down, done on the app, is what I think. But I'm not 100% sure on that one. Let me just try it myself here. That's probably the problem.
Yeah, you need to play it in the app. So, um, in order to do the homework challenge, it needs to be done in the app. Yeah. So perhaps that's the problem if you're trying it on, if you're trying it on the website. Um, the homework challenge won't work for you. It needs to be done on the app. If you're playing the game, the quiz game, it can be done on Kahoot.it. Um, but if you're doing the homework challenge, it cannot be done on Kahoot.it. So I apologize for, for putting that into the chat box there. So I think that was the challenge. All right, maybe just a quick uh, yes or no. How many of you were able to try the game? Okay, so I see most of you were unable to. Okay, so for those who were unable to, I'm assuming perhaps you were trying it on the website. You need to make sure you try it on the app. And that's something you can try after the webinar today. Yeah, so I think you need to use your phone for the app. Or you can also use an iPad. I use it on my iPad um, or on your phone. Um, if you want to do the quiz, it can be done on the website, on a laptop. Okay, so moving along, um, if you want to do the quiz and you want to create your own quiz, I think this is the most exciting way to use Kahoot. Unfortunately, it was a bit difficult to do in this format on a webinar, so that's why um, I tried the homework challenge with you. Um, but if you do want to make your own, it's Fairly straightforward, once you get into um, make your own account, um, you'll see over here it says create, and that's where you just create your own games. Um, and so once you click on create, I decided to create a Kahoot quiz. It will tell you, give you options of what you can create, and you'll enter your title in here, you'll put your question here, uh, you'll type your answers in here, and you'll select what is the correct answer. Um, you can upload images, and on the side here, you can add more questions. There's also a question bank. So it's fairly, fairly straightforward, and um, you'll just follow the prompts on the screen to create a variety of questions. When you want um, to find that Kahoot that you've made, um, you'll find that on the top bar here under Kahoots, and that's where you'll find the Kahoot that you've made. Um, you can also find pre-made um, cahoots under discover and you can find reports to find out um, how well your students did on those games. Um, if you would like to play the game with your students, um, you go under the cahoots and you find these are the different games that I've prepared. This is the one that we did today for the webinar on the Grey Cup. And when I shared it for the webinar today, I clicked on challenge. That's the homework challenge. Um, if you want to do it as the game for the quiz, you'll click on play. So um, here, this is a Kahoot I made um, for a presentation I gave, gave at the Team Teal Conference. And I just simply clicked on play. And then when I came to the screen, you can choose if you want to do the classic game, which is players will be on their own mobile devices. Um, or, and again, you can do the website or the app or you can get them to play in teams. There's a team mode so students can share um, as well. And so many different ways to use it. Um, in the interest of time, I won't read through it, but I do wanna just highlight that a really great way to use it is for review. So many instructors in our program are using it to review vocabulary, for example. So students have to choose the correct meaning of the word that comes up. Um, so any kind of formative assessment or review, it's very um, helpful. And the practice that we did today was the homework challenge. Um, and you needed to just use an app for that. But again, there's so many different ways you can do it. You can have students create their own cahoots. Um, maybe you're, uh, they prepare for some of the vocabulary that you studied, for example. Um, some instructor perspectives in our program, students love the competition. Um, it can be used at any age. It's very user-friendly. Um, Great for vocabulary. The instructor found that vocabulary tests have Im improved after doing these games with their students. And I thought this was really an interesting comment that even if your technology skills are not advanced, you should have no trouble at all. Um, so this instructor felt it was very user friendly and easy to use. 
and some other perspectives here too, but I will just move along again with time. Um, are there any questions that I can answer at this time? I'm not sure how long we have here, Pam. I'm, I'm open to staying longer, um, but if we do need to, to finish right at eight o'clock, then um, we, we can take a few minutes more. Uh, if uh, anyone has uh, more questions to ask, we can do that. If it's okay with you. Kendall. Yes. Yeah, definitely. So feel free to uh, unmute your microphone if you would like, if you want to ask using the, the voice or jot down your questions. Kimberly. Yes. I would like to know how, how you managed to learn all this. Was it something you learned on your own? Um, actually, initially, I, um, years ago, was using no technology at all. I was not tech, tech savvy in the, in the least, and I had, um, I had support. So workshops um, where people guided me in helping me to learn how to use many of these tools. And um, so it's quite interesting now that I'm doing workshops myself with these tools. But um, um, yeah, so once I've had some training, then I started looking on my own and finding resources um, to learn more tools. But initially it was through support um, professional development. Are you doing these workshops online? Uh, this is my first online workshop. I have okay. been doing workshops um, in our program uh, for instructors and I, I did one at a conference, but um, this is my first online one. Thank you. Well, my pleasure. Thanks for, for coming. How did I find the tools? Um, I, I can show you some of the resources in a moment where I found some of these tools. Um, just talking with other instructors online, um, PD opportunities, um, some of my own searching um, as well. I'm just looking at some of your other questions here. Yeah, you know, these are definitely great what tools to keep learners excited, doing something new. Um, many learners are younger and they've grown up with technology, so um, they almost just expect it many times. So um, great uh, to keep students engaged and really to, to individualize their learning. A lot of these tools are a great way to help students where they're at. Oh, my pleasure. I'm, I'm glad that uh, many of you have found it informative. All right, just a few things I want to walk you through. And if there are more questions, I'm well, well, I'm happy to stay on a bit longer. Um, I really encourage you to take a look at some of these resources. Um, a lot of what I've learned has come from different, some of these references and resources. So uh, for the presentation today, these are the references that I looked at. Um, in particular, I um, would like to recommend this last one here. Um, this is a video, if you're interested in Kahoot. It's a complete beginner's guide to Kahoot. Uh, Kahoot um, has been around for a while, but there are new um, features. And this is a video, step-by-step -step video, um, explaining how to use the new version of Kahoot. So I think this is fantastic. Um, all the rest of these are, are great as well, um, but specifically I'll recommend this. This one also here is nice too, um, Flipgrid for the camera shy. So some students um, feel really shy um, in, in doing videos and it gives you just some different techniques to, um, to help those students and adapt um, their experience so that they feel comfortable. Here's some additional resources for Edpuzzle in particular. And um, in terms of what I'd like to highlight, let's see here. Um, yeah, I think um, this one here is quite nice. This is a video. So it walks you through step by step by step um, to using different features of Edpuzzle. So that's quite nice. They're all very helpful, but this one I would recommend there. Uh, in terms of Flipgrid, uh, lots here as well. Uh, this one right here, uh, oh, not that one, where is it now? This one, I, I highly recommend. This is a very thorough handbook, step-by-step -step with pictures for how to use Flipgrid. It's all the different steps. This is really how I learned to use Flipgrid, was this, um, well, I use version four, um, but there's now a version, or sorry, version three, but there's now a version four. So I highly recommend this. Um, as well, there's video tutorials, again, step-by-step -step explaining how to, how to use um, Flipgrid. And then finally for Kahoot um, as well, 
um, just some different resources. You know, if you want to play Kahoot in team mode as a quiz, as a game, you can go here. Um, Russell Stannard, um, for anyone interested in learning more about using technology, uh, he's fantastic. He has, um, he's online and he, he offers all kinds of training with videos. And so a lot of what I've learned is, um, comes from Russell Stannard. Um, he also has um, a weekly newsletter that he sends out. And so I've signed up for that and I get a lot of um, updates um, about different uh, tools that can be used in the classroom. So he's really a great resource that I, I would recommend as well. Um, here's another video as well. Um, this is um, an introduction to Kahoot. So um, just a few resources there. So really my hope um, is that, you know, combined with this webinar today, and the resources that you um, can take this information and implement it into your own classroom. These are excellent resources. Thank you very much, Kimberly, uh, for sharing them and uh, for this uh, very informative uh, webinar. Uh, it, it has been our pleasure to have you our, uh, as our guest speaker. And uh, we're, uh, I would like to thank you all one more time uh, for attending tonight's webinar. Uh, if you would like to request a certificate of participation, please feel free to send me an email within one hour of the end of the webinar, uh, mentioning your name, uh, first and last name, how you, you would like your name to appear on the certificate. Uh, and just one more comment I'd like to make sure. is, is that um, my contact information um, has been shared. And if you have any other questions about using any of these tools, free, feel free to call, contact me directly by email. And I'd be more than happy to, um, to help you through. Because I know sometimes when, you, uh, when technology is challenging or you're not comfortable with it, it, it's really helpful to have someone walk you through step by step. So, so don't hesitate. I'd be happy to help. And thanks for, for joining me today. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Have a great night. You too. Thanks again.